Okay, welcome to Author Spotlight. My name is Aurelia Wynn. I'm the owner and operator of Wynn Publications. And tonight, I we are going to be talking to Mr. Robertson Green. Hello, and how are you? Hello, how are you? All is well on this end, and I'm glad to be here with you. Awesome, thank you so much. So can you tell us? A little bit about yourself and what it is that you do full-time outside of writing. Well, Robertson Green is, is, you know, I'm a professional by day. I'm a director of drug and research development for biotech and currently working on my doctorate in epidemiology as well. Um, when I'm not doing that, I'm writing. I'm a huge poetry writer, a short story writer, so... I'm always finding something to do about and write about, you know. Nice, cool. So where, so where are you located, and then where are you from? So currently, I am living in the Bay Area, you know, the San Fran, Oakland area. Okay. But originally, I'm from New Orleans, born and raised. Okay. What brought you out to California? Uh, my career, I've lived so many places. I've lived about 10 places in about six years for the job. So it moves me around the states and abroad. Nice. So you were saying that you are an avid poetry writer and short story writer as well. So can you tell us about yes. your latest book and what genre does it fit in? Is it a book of poems? So my latest book is all over the place. It's a, it's, it's a book of 200 of my um, pieces of poetry that I've written over the years. Uh, I've been writing every day since the age of 16, and the book really doesn't follow a certain theme mm -hmm. other than just being all over the place, so I guess that is a theme in itself. But um, I, I talk about everything from what we're dealing with, with, with issues with self, issues with others, Mm -hmm. um, love, happiness, um, deceit, I write about everything, everything that any man, any woman has ever thought about or, or experienced in life, I write about it, you know, mm -hmm. in my way, so it's a contemporary type of writing, but I like it. Okay, so how long, so you said 200, so then how long are your uh, pieces in the book, are they, or is it like a mixture? But for the most part, most of them are just a page. Okay. Um, a page or two, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow, that's good. So who would you recommend to read your book then? What kind of audience do you think could really relate to what you're saying? Well, I would say age ranges between 25 on up. Um, men and women, um, no matter what race, creed, or color, or uh, political affiliation. Anybody who, who likes to read and who loves um, the art of poetry. Okay, nice. Okay, cool. Well, I'm definitely going to have to pick it up and see what you're talking about. I love poetry, and uh, just as of late, I've been talking to a lot of people who write poetry, and so I I have a few things I'm, I'm going to read probably in the next couple of months. <laughs> and so I'll definitely <laughs> put that on my list. And so... I'm curious, what was the toughest challenge that you faced in becoming an author? I hear, you know, you have your professional life, you're going to school. How, like, how do you balance it all? And then, um, again, what was the toughest challenge? Well, when, you, when you're when doing something that you love, you don't even see the challenge. You don't even realize that your, 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 your time is being so much consumed by it because you're doing what mm -hmm. you love. But... The biggest challenge for me is that I'm a private person. I grew up as the only child, you know, so okay. I wasn't quite vocal with my feelings and, and, and people getting to know me. I wasn't quite comfortable. I was always shy. So putting a book of my writings out there was like, wow, these people have access to my inner thoughts, you know, and, mm -hmm. and my life experiences. So how am I going to be perceived? But once the book came out and I saw the cover, I was so excited. <laughs> yeah. I kind of lost all of that fear. But every now and then I just sit back and wonder, um, hey, I wonder what people are thinking about 
the various pieces in the book. Um, mm-hmm. What are they thinking? I always get DMs like on Instagram or Facebook. People telling me that they ordered the book and they love certain selections, you know, mm-hmm. and we need more, we need more. So it keeps me motivated to keep writing. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's good. Definitely. So are, are, does that mean you're working on something new or what does that mean that you just... I'm we'll always see. writing. I'm always working on something. So okay. I can see in the near future there will be a, um, maybe a sequel to All Over the Place. Oh. Um, so definitely. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. I know that's probably like one of the questions that a lot of others are like, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to write another book. But I, I think it's a right. good question. <laughs> so... Awesome. Okay. Well, then, do you have any advice or lessons that you can offer to other writers? Well, I always say, um, you know, write with passion. Um, mm-hmm. Be honest. Be true to yourself. Be true to your audience, and it'll reflect in your work. Mm-hmm. Um, and be vulnerable. Allow yourself to receive criticisms. Um, mm-hmm. Allow yourself to to receive. Um, you know, self criticism. You know, it's okay. It's, 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 okay, it's okay to look in the mirror and, and, and start correcting some things about yourself as it was, relates to your um, your writing. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. so be flexible, be open. So I can. That's the best advice I can offer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. I agree. Um, I agree. You know, I had I was interviewing this one author and. Uh, she was talking about her um, her book signing, and she was like, "Yeah, you know." She was thinking it was gonna be like this really big event, and then only like seven people showed up or something like that. And she said, "Man, that was so hard for her." But she said one of her friends told her, "Like, well, what did you expect?" But kind of like not in a mean way, but kind of like to bring her back to reality. Like, you know, you're new at this. You know, kind of be honest with yourself, um, kind of thing. So I think that kind of relates to what you're saying. Like, really be honest with yourself, criticize yourself, and be okay with it. And so, yeah, I, I it's definitely, hard sometimes, and yeah, and no matter how many people are in the audience, the show must go on. You know, you right. still have to perform, um, and you have to be okay with that. With one audience member to one hundred audience members, you know, mm-hmm. and so forth. So. Yeah, uh-huh. to be open to it. Yeah, 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 I agree. So how have you balanced self-care with your drive for success? Can you repeat that question? Uh, how have you balanced uh, self-care with your drive for success? Well, self-care for me starts with the mental. Mm-hmm. Um, as you, I, I wake up every morning, I sit at the foot of my bed, you know, I say my affirmations, I say my prayers, and I, I get clear on what I need to do for today, for myself starting, and then for work, and then, you know, after work. I, I think having a clear mind and a clear vision on life is a great start for, for self-care. Mm-hmm. And that translates into my writings, you know, I'm, I'm clear of in the direction I want to write. I'm clear in energies that I want to be around and I don't want to be around, you know, so um, that, that works for me. Mm. What do you mean about, like, get clear? Like, what does that look like or or can you uh, give more details about that? So when, I'm, when I say getting clear, you know, um, align those things up in your life that are important, mm-hmm. that you need to work on, that you... Um, need to help and give others. You know, like I think love is something that is is a part of self care. We need to receive it. We need to feel it. We need to hear it, and we need to give it as well. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm always conscious enough to give that. You know, mm-hmm. in everything I do, I don't care if I'm making a piece of toast. I will make the best piece of toast because mm-hmm. I would put that butter on there gently. I will make sure that both ends are toasted properly. And I'm going to eat it, and I'm going to give you a half of it, and then you're going to like it. And so all that, is, it starts with self-care, you know. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I like that. I like that description. That was funny. I absolutely could see what you're talking about. And I think, you know, the, I'm just going to say that's one of the things that I enjoy about talking to different authors is you could tell, especially when you write poetry, it comes out in the way that you speak to people. And I think, you know, you're onto something that also comes out in just kind of the way that you live your life, just who you are kind of shines through um, your writing. I, and I just think every aspect of you. And so um, I appreciate it. I really do. I really do appreciate that. Oh, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay, now let's talk about, you know, has there ever been a moment, you seem like a very positive person, but has there ever been a moment where you wanted to quit or you did quit and then if so, how did you handle it and move forward? No, I don't, I've not had moments where I wanted to quit, mm -hmm. but I've had moments where I just needed a break mm -hmm. and to take some time out just for me nobody else in a room with no television no cell phone no social media just me alone with my thoughts laying in bed mm -hmm. um usually that works for me you know after i have that moment i'm recharged and i'm back at it and we have to be right mm -hmm. when you're your only provider and, and you're your only caretaker or whatever the case may be you're the only one mm -hmm. you have no time you have no way in the world to quit anything. Well, you must keep going. And mm -hmm. I'm that way because my mother is that way. My mm -hmm. grandparents are that way. My uncles and my aunties are that way. You know, I come from a long line of people who just didn't quit mm -hmm. when times were very dreary, you know? Mm -hmm. So we don't do that. I was in raised to be that way, and I will continue to uh, not be that way. You know, mm -hmm. to, to not ever give up or quit. Oh, wow. That's that's really good. That's really important. And so if you're just listening to this interview today, I hope that you got your pen and paper out. I say this during every interview. You definitely learn something new, whether it's about self-publishing or um, things like we're, we've been talking about, just some some really good life skills. Um, definitely be taking notes. Um, so then, what are your top three things that keep you going? Um, love for life, love for self, love for others, um, keeps my world going. And I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Um, That's good. Um, I love living. I, you know, in, in life we have the good, the bad, and the ugly. We, we're going to experience it. I don't care who you are, what financial bracket you're in, or whatever. You're going to experience the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know? Mm -hmm. And you take every moment, whether it's good or bad, and you use it as fertilizer to grow and get to the next stage of life, you know? So mm -hmm. that's just that. Yeah. Okay. So what, I always want to know, like, what does that look like? Because it's, it's, uh, I think love is a very um, broad term. And so what does it look like? You mean you said love for life, uh, love for self, and your love for others. What does that look like? Does that look like sharing a piece of delicious toast that you take your time on? Or what, what does that look like? <laughs> you know what? It actually means respect. Uh -huh. it, it, it means being open. It means being honest. It, it means taking in. It means letting go. Mm -hmm. You know? When you love yourself and you love others and you love the, the world that we are in, you know, you, you do all those things. You love peace of mind. You know, mm -hmm. of course, peace of mind conquers everything and it can take you anywhere. And this goes back to me saying having a clear vision on life. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it gets foggy sometimes for all of us, but we know we've experienced the good times before and, and the, the open times before, so we know that it's not going to be foggy always. Mm -hmm. Right? So, I love life. Mm -hmm. Even when I feel like, damn, this is like so unfair. Like, yeah. the walls are closing in. But something in me pushes me to bounce back. And that's the discernment of never quitting, right? Mm -hmm. And thinking about my family members, my ancestors who never quit. Mm -hmm. And they gave that, that to me, that gift to me. So, and everybody's definition of never quitting is it, it, different. Yeah. You know? 
that's what works for me. I hope that your definition of never quitting is to, to keep on trucking, to yeah. keep your eyes on the prize, because we all can see that that the goal, the finish line in the, in the distance, right? Mm -hmm. okay, and sometimes it's harder for some of us to get there. And we feel like weights are on our foot, shackled on our feet, that we can't do anything. But we're going to get there. Mm. You're going to get there, I promise. I'm still trying to get there every day. Every day, the goal just pushes back um, a little bit further mm -hmm. for me. But that's everyone. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's good. That is really good. So then, I mean, is there anything else? You, I just feel like you, you just shared it all. That's it. We can go home. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else that you would want to share or offer to the community? Where can we find your book? So you can find my book on Amazon, Robertson Green, All Over the Place is the title of the book. Okay. It's there. Um, it's selling like crazy, and I do what I do because I love to write. I, just, I don't do anything for the sales mm. or whatever. So if I sell one book, it's like I sold a million of them. Yeah. And if one person tells me that they love a, a certain selection in the book, then I, I, I'm so grateful mm. to the higher power that that one person likes what I put out because it wasn't easy to put it out and yeah. give a piece of me. So. Check it out on Amazon. You can follow me on Instagram. I'm King Mr. Robertson on, on on Instagram, and I usually post certain selections up from the book there, and I have the link there for you to order the book as well. Nice, awesome. Okay, you said one more thing that had me thinking. So your books are flying off the shelf. Tell us, us self-published authors. How? What? What? What's your marketing secret, if, if you don't mind? What do you do? Well, I didn't do anything different than any of the indie writers have done. Mm -hmm. I just promoted on Facebook and Instagram and word of mouth, mm -hmm. and my followers and the book purchasers they posted and they gave their reviews okay. on on Amazon and on Instagram, and you know, if you tell a person. One thing, and they're going to tell another person another thing. And mm -hmm. before you know it, I have a group of people purchasing the book. And um, it was, I'm so glad I got the exposure. If I never sell another book, I can mm -hmm. say, wow, yeah. I am a published author, and that book is sitting on the shelf at someone's house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. That's a that's definitely a good way to look at it. Um, that last thing that you yeah. said, hey, I've, I've done it. I've came and I saw and I conquered. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so good. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I appreciate your time. Um,